Hi everyone and welcome back to another lab. In our previous lab, we covered the basics of spanning tree protocol. In this video, we will dive deeper into spanning tree protocol, focusing on how to influence the road bridge to load balance our traffic from the end devices to the application end. We will cover how to manipulate the road port to influence traffic to the road bridge. We will flap an interface that connects to an end device and observe how long it takes for connectivity to be restored. We will also use some features that Rapid per VLAN spanning tree offers, such as port fast, BBDU guard and root guard in order for us to protect our STP from unauthorized changes. So we will do the usual where we're going to go through the lab topology and the lab table. We will review the lab tasks and then finally we will walk you through the solution steps. By the end of this lab you will learn how to influence the root bridge election, configure root ports, enable port fast on access ports and implement root guard to protect against unauthorized changes to the spanning tree topology. So the first things first regarding the lab topology as you can see on the screen, we have four different switches. A couple of access switches that are at the bottom that connects to the end devices called ASW1 and ASW2 or access switch one and access switch two. And these two switches are interconnected with the distribution switches, DSW1 and DSW2. And these distribution switches are then connected to our servers, server one, server two, server four, and server three. We have a couple of VLANs. These are VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So PC1, PC3, Server 1, and Server 3, all of these devices resides in the same VLAN that is 10. And PC2, PC4, and Server 2, Server 4 resides in VLAN 20. All links that interconnect the switches operate in trunk mode and allow VLAN 10 and 20. The objective of this lab is to configure rapid per VLAN spanning tree protocol on all access switches and distribution switches and we are going to influence the distribution switch 1 to be the root bridge for VLAN 10 and distribution switch 2 to be the root bridge for VLAN 20. And we will configure DSW1 to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 20 and DSW2 to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 10. We will also simulate a link failure to test how long it takes to restore connectivity when bouncing fast Ethernet 023 on access switch 1. Then we will configure all access ports with port fast and enable BBDU guard. Finally, we will configure root guard across all designated ports that are facing downstream that are connected to the access switches on DSW1 and DSW2. Regarding the lab tables, the first table that we are going to tackle is the switch VLAN table, as you can see on the screen here. And that table presents details regarding the device name, the interface configuration, and the associated VLAN, as well as the interface mode. So device name column basically lists the names of the network devices. And you can see on the screen, ASW1 or access switch one, access switch two, distribution switch one and distribution switch two. Regarding the interface ID, this column displays the unique identifiers of the interfaces on the respective devices. And then we can see the interface mode and here it indicates the operation mode of each interface. So for example, fast ethernet zero one on access switch one is going to operate in trunk mode and is going to allow VLAN 10 and 20. Similarly with fast ethernet 02 and fast ethernet 03. And if we were to look at fast ethernet 023 and fast ethernet 024, both of these interfaces will operate in access mode and each interface will reside in the respective VLAN. So 023 will be part of VLAN 10 and 024 will be part of VLAN 20. We then move into the end host IPv4 address table, as you can see on the screen here. And just to let you know, and this is for your own information, in this lab, we already configured each end host prior to the lab with the information you see on this table. So PC1 is already being configured with the appropriate IPv4 as well as the subnet mask, and it resides in the appropriate VLAN as well. Similarly with PC2, PC3, and PC4, and the same applies across all our servers as well.
Okay, let's move into the lab tasks. And the first task that we are going to tackle is we are going to verify the current configuration across all switches. We're going to make sure that the VLAN database have been created and each interface is associated with the respective VLAN. We're going to make sure that all the interfaces or all the links that interconnects all switches operate in trunk mode. And we are going to check some connectivity between each PCs that resides in the same VLAN. For instance, PC PC1 is able to communicate with PC3 that resides in the same VLAN, VLAN 10, and PC2 is able to communicate with PC4 that resides in the same VLAN, which is VLAN 20. Once we've done that, we're going to move into step two. This is where we are going to determine the type of spanning tree that is used by the switch by default. And we are then going to move to step number three, where we are going to discover and verify the root bridge for both VLANs 10 and 20. We will check what is the default behavior of a spanning tree protocol without us influencing it. And we're gonna find out what switch has been elected to be the root bridge by default. We will also gonna discuss a few parameters that is related to spanning tree protocol. For example, what is, we're gonna find out what is the hello time that is configured by default, what is the max age parameter and the forward delay parameter as well. And then once we finish this task, we will then move into the fourth task where we are going to influence the distribution switch one to be the root bridge for VLAN 10. And in this case, we are going to use the priority value number of 8192. We will wait for the network to reconverge. And then we are going to perform some in-flight checks and do some verification to make sure that DSW1 is the actual root bridge based on the output from the appropriate command. Then we're gonna to move to step number five, where we're gonna do the same thing, but for VLAN 20 on DSW2. And then next, we're gonna move into step six, where we are going to influence distribution switch one to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 20. And the reason being is because just in case if DSW2 fails for whatever reason, let's say the hardware went down or the all interfaces went down for whatever reason, then we wanna make sure that the distribution switch one is the one that is going to take over to be the root bridge rather than the access switches that resides at the bottom or towards the end hosts. So we're gonna make sure that DSW1 will be the secondary root bridge should anything go wrong with DSW2 um, for VLAN 20. And then we're gonna do the same thing for DSW2. So we're gonna force or influence DSW2 to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 10. And we are also going to verify our configuration and do some in-flight checks to make sure that we are configuring our switches appropriately. Next, we're gonna move into step eight, where we're gonna find out what is the current root port for access uh, switch two. And we are going to try to influence interface fast ethernet zero one to be the root port for access switch two for VLAN 10. We will verify our configuration and we're gonna do the same thing on access switch one on fast ethernet zero one for VLAN 20. We will verify our configuration and then we're gonna move into step 10. So step number 10, we are going to configure the rapid per VLAN spanning tree protocol across all switches. We will verify our configuration and do some in-flight checks. Once we've done that, we're then gonna move into step 11 where we are going to initiate a continuous ping from PC1 to server one and mimic a link failure by flapping fast ethernet 023 interface on access switch one. And we're gonna count how many seconds that we had to wait until the connectivity has been restored. And then once we have done that, we're gonna record this and then we're gonna move into step 12. And on step 12, we are going to then do some conf configurations across all access ports. So we are going to introduce port fast as well as PBDU guard across all interfaces facing end host and servers. And we will do some in-flight checks to make sure that we configured the appropriate interfaces, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're gonna move to step number 13 and we are going to repeat step 11 and we're gonna check how long this time we had to wait for connectivity to be restored. And then once we've done that, we're gonna move into step 14, where we are going to issue the appropriate command to protect the root bridge on DSW1 and DSW2 for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And then 
After this, we will do a couple of more tasks. These are, we're going to check the connectivity between each um, device. So for instance, PC1 and PC3 are able to communicate and ping each other, as well as ping server 1 and server 2. And similarly with PC2 is able to ping PC3 and are able to ping server 2 and server 4. Once we have done that, we then go ahead and save our configuration. If for whatever reason ping failed and there is connectivity issue, we can then go through these steps to troubleshoot the problem, isolate it, and fix it here and there. This is a systematic approach, and it's a methodical way of doing some troubleshooting to isolate the problem as fast as we can, and also as efficient as possible. And that will be the end of the lab. Okay, this is the moment where I ask you to pause the video and give this a go yourself to test your knowledge and skills. So I added the lab document in this video description so that you can download it and practice at your own pace. I have also included a couple of packet tracer labs for you to download. You will find a pre and a post version of the lab. The pre lab is for those who want the lab ready to go and tackle all tasks. And the post lab is for those who want the full lab solution. So enough of that and let's dive into the lab solution. Okay, so I'm gonna tackle the first task and I'm gonna check the current configuration across all our switches. So I'm gonna start with access switch one. So I'm gonna go to the CLI and from there, I'm gonna issue this command show VLAN brief, and here we can see that we have a couple of VLANs that have been created, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and also associated with the appropriate interface or appropriate port as well. So if we also issue show interfaces trunk, here we can see that we have three trunks that have been configured. Fast Ethernet 01, that's connected to distribution switch one, fast ethernet zero two that is connected to distribution switch two, and then fast ethernet zero three that is connected to access switch one. All of these interfaces are operating in trunk and also they are allowing VLAN 10 and 20. We can also issue show interfaces status. And from here we can see that these three interfaces are operating in trunk are connected. These two interfaces, fast ethernet 023 and fast ethernet 024 are connected to the end hosts. So fast ethernet 023 is connected to PC1 and 024 is connected to PC2. PC1 is part of VLAN 10, PC2 is part of VLAN 20. So let's do the same thing on access switch two. We get the same output here. Again, the same output here. And the same output there as well. PC3 is connected to fast ethernet 023 and PC4 is connected to fast ethernet 024. Let's go to DSW1. So I'm gonna say show VLAN brief and we get similar output as well. And here we can see that fast ethernet 023 is connected to server one, fast ethernet 024 is connected to server two. Let's move into DSW2 and do the same thing quickly. So I'll show VLAN brief. Again, we have these two VLANs, show interfaces trunk. And again, all these three interfaces operating in trunk and allowing VLAN 20 and 10. And then finally, show interfaces status. Again, these three interfaces operating in trunk and these two interfaces are also connected to the appropriate end device.
So I'm going to go to step number two, where we are going to verify or find out what is the current PST mode. So in order for us to do that, we would need to show, we would need to issue this command, show spanning tree summary. And here it tells you that the current spanning tree mode is per VLAN spanning tree. And this is the default. And if I do the same thing on switch to show spanning tree summary, and we get similar output here. The same applies on across the distribution switches as well, Dis distribution switch one, and I'm sure is going to be the same for distribution switch two. As you can see on the screen here. Okay, so one of the things that I actually forgot to do is to check the connectivity between PC1 and PC3, PC2 and PC4. So let's go back to my topology and issue that quickly. So I'm going to go to PC1 and then from there you would go to desktop and then command prompt and let's do that quickly. And here you can see that we have managed to ping PC3. Let's do the same thing across PC2. So I'm going to go to desktop, command prompt, and issue this command 192.168.20.101. And we have connectivity. If you want to do the extra mile, we can actually try to ping server two or four. So I'm going to ping server two. So I'm going to say ping 192.168.20.200. And there is reachability and connectivity. Next, let's move into step three, where we are going to discover and verify the root bridge for both VLANs 10 and 20. So we would need to issue this command show spanning tree VLAN 10. And right now, as we can see from the output here, is the local switch is the actual root bridge because it is explicitly says here, this bridge is the root. And also we can compare the MAC address with the local MAC address. So this is the local output for the local switch. And this is the output for the root bridge. And as you can see, the priority number or the priority ID as well as the MAC address do match in both cases. So that means ASW1 is the root bridge for VLAN 10. And if we do, if we issue the same command for VLAN 20, we get similar result. And the reason being is because if we were to compare all MAC addresses, access switch one MAC address and access switch two MAC address and distribution switch one MAC address, and finally the distribution switch two MAC address, we will see that the lowest MAC address of them all will be access switch one. And let's do that exercise quickly. So I'm gonna actually open a notepad. And here I'm gonna say A is W1 is going to have this MAC address. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here. And let's do the same thing for access switch two. So I'm going to go back to access switch two and issue show spanning tree VLAN 10. And I'm going to copy the local MAC address. and do the same thing for DSW1 and DSW2. So I'm gonna go back to DSW1 and issue the same thing. So show spanning tree VLAN 10. And by the way, VLAN 10 is gonna be the same as VLAN 20. It's just, it's gonna have a different uh, BID. And I'm gonna copy the MAC address for DSW1. And I'm going to paste it here. And then finally, we need to get the MAC address for DSW2. So show spanning tree VLAN 10. And here it is the MAC address for DSW2. 
So I'm going to paste it here. Now, if you look at the MAC addresses that you see on the screen here, you would see that the lowest MAC address is ASW1. And if we look here, every, every MAC address starts with zero. And then the second um, hexadecimal is zero. And then the third hexadecimal, this is zero. This is three. So this is higher than that. So that will be eliminated straight away. Um, and then we can see here, this is D. So that will be eliminated as well. And then A, that is going to be way before than C because we, you know, we're talking about hexadecimal value here and we know that A is lower than C. Um, so that is going to be eliminated and what is going to remain is A is W1 and that's how A is W1 is the root bridge for um, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So the next subtask under the third task, which is subtask C, and this subtask is related to the hello time that is configured by default. And you can see here by default, the hello time that is configured is two seconds based on the output that I'm highlighting. And just to let you know that the hello time is an interval between BBDU's bridge protocol data unit frames that are sent by the root bridge. And that means every two seconds, the root bridge will send a BBDU to the rest of the switches. We can see that the max age is set to 20 seconds by default. And the max age is related to the maximum time a BBDU is stored before being discarded by the switch. And the default time or the default age is 20 seconds. You can increase that or you can decrease that. It's really up to you and based on your business requirements. Um, and then the final attributes that I want to discuss with you is the forward delay. And right now, as you can see, by default is set to 15 seconds. And this is the time spent in the listening and learning state uh, before it moves into the forwarding state. So it has to wait 15 seconds. So we can do the same thing on distribution switch one. And I'm sure we're going to get the same result here. So as you can see from the, this is the root. Um, bridge, but also this output is related to the local switch. And as you can see here is the hello time is two seconds, the max max age is 20 and the forward delay is 15. So next we're going to move into step four, where we are going to influence DSW1 to be the root bridge for VLAN 10. And we are going to do that by using a priority value of 8192. So in order for you to do that, it's very simple and straightforward. We're going to go to global config. And then from there, we're going to say spanning tree VLAN 10. And we're going to hit the priority command. And then we, if we question mark that, you will see the content sensitive help. And here it will ask you to increase or increment the priority value by 4096. So we are going to use 8192 value and we're going to hit enter and we're going to wait for a few seconds to let the spanning tree reconverge and then we're going to hit end and then let's perform some in-flight checks. So we're going to say show spanning tree VLAN 10. And right now we can see that we are on DSW1 and now we can confirm that DSW1 is the root bridge for VLAN 10 as you can see on the screen. And what changes the BID have changed from the default value, which I believe it was 32,768. And it changed from that value to 8,202. And the reason why you see this value is because we have done some addition. We use this 8,192 plus 10, and that will give us 8,202. So let's go back to access switch one. And you can see one moment ago for VLAN 10, that was the root bridge. Let's check now. If we say show span tree VLAN 10, you can see that now is no longer the root bridge. And in order for access switch one to go to the root bridge or to reach the root bridge, it would have to use fast ethernet 01. And the current cost to get to the root bridge is 19, so which means is one hop away. However, if we did the same thing, but for VLAN 20, you can see that VLAN 20, that is still the root bridge. Access switch one is still the root bridge for VLAN 20, and that is going to be changed 
next. So I'm going to jump into DSW2 and I'm going to do the same thing, but this time we are going to use a different command. We are not going to use a priority value this time. So I'm going to go to global config and I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN 20. And if we hit question mark here, we will see the content sensitive help. And you can see that you can use priority, but also you can use the other option, which is root. So we're going to say root and we're going to question mark that. And you can see we can use two options. And in this case, we're going to use the primary because we want DSW2 to be the primary root bridge for VLAN 20. So I'm going to say primary and I'm going to hit enter. And then I will wait a few seconds for the network to reconverge. And then we're going to issue show spanning tree VLAN 20. And you can see straight away that this is the root bridge for spanning tree VLAN 20. Right now, the BID is 24,596. And if I go back to access switch one and reissue the same command for VLAN 20, you can see that the root bridge has this MAC address with the current BID value of that. And the current cost is 19, and you can reach this switch via fast ethernet 02. So next, what we're going to do, we are going to move into step seven, where we are going to influence DSW2 to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 10. So I'll go back to DSW2. And from here, I'll go back to global config again. And I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN 10. And then I'm going to say root. And that is going to be secondary. And actually, before we do that, guys, I want to do something. So I'm going to say show spanning tree VLAN 10. And what you see on the screen is the current BID for DSW2 is 32,778. Just bear in mind that as soon as we hit this command, this value will change. It will be lower than the default value and it will be higher than the root bridge because it wants to be somewhere in the middle. So it's not going to be lower than the root bridge such that it will take over from DSW1, but also is not going to be higher than or the same than the uh, access switches. Should anything happen to DSW1, DSW2 will take over. So basically what I'm asking you to do is literally pay attention to the BID value here because that is going to change as soon as we hit this command. So I'll go back to global config and I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN 10 root secondary. Now that we've done that, let's reissue the same command. And here you can see that the BID value have changed to 28,682. So that means if the primary root bridge failed for whatever reason, this switch will take over. Because if I go to access switch one and issue show spanning tree VLAN 10, you can see the access switch one, it has a BID of 32,778, which is a lot higher than uh, what we have configured on DSW2, as you can see on the screen here. Next, we're going to do the same thing on DSW1. So I'm going to go to DSW1 CLI and I will issue show spanning tree VLAN 20. And you can see that the root bridge BID is 24,596. So I want DSW1 to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 20. So that means once I issue the appropriate command, this value is going to decrease. So let's do that. Configure terminal. And I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN 20 root secondary. And if I issue the same command, show spanning tree VLAN 20, you will see that this BID is higher than the root bridge ID, but also is a lot lower than the access switch one BID. So if I say show spanning tree VLAN 10, 
you can see this is still 32,778. And if I did the same thing for VLAN 20, we have the same or similar value, 32,788. Okay, so with that being done, we're going to move into step number eight, where we are going to look at the current root port on access switch two and access switch one. And we're going to do some port manipulation to influence fast Ethernet zero one to be the root port for access switch two for VLAN 10 and do the same thing for access switch one as well. So we're going to start with access switch two. So I'm going to jump into access switch two. So I'm going to do that. And from there, I will just issue the show spanning tree VLAN 10. And right now we can see that the current port to access the root bridge for VLAN 10 is via fast ethernet 02. And we want to influence fast ethernet 01 to be the root bridge. So basically, if I go back to my topology, right now, I am on access switch one. And we're talking about VLAN 20 here. So remember VLAN 20, the primary root bridge is actually DSW2. This is purely for practice so that you can take the same concept and apply it in real world scenario. So as you can see on the screen, obviously the most efficient way of getting to the root bridge for VLAN 20 is via fast Ethernet 02. However, I want to manipulate this and I want it to go via DSW1 and then from DSW1 to DSW2. So it's going to use fast Ethernet 01 and then fast Ethernet 03. So that means if we were to add the cost by default, we know the cost for fast Ethernet interfaces or links is, is 19. So we're going to add 19 plus 19. That will give us 38. So once we have done our manipulation, it will pick fast Ethernet 01. And you will see that the cost to the root bridge will change from 19 to 38. So let's go back to our switch, access switch 2. And in order for us to do that, we are going to say configure terminal, and I'm going to say interface range fast ethernet zero slash two dash three. And I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN 10 cost 50. And I'm going to hit enter. And obviously, we're going to have to give it some time for it to go through the different states, listening, uh, and then eventually it will go to the forwarding state. So I'm going to say show spanning tree VLAN 10. And right now, you can see it's in the listening state. We're talking about fast Ethernet 01 here. And if I issue the command again, it's still in, now it's in the learning state. If I issue again, still in the learning state. And now it's in the forwarding state. As you can see on the screen here, the current cost for this interface is 19. And to get to the root bridge, guys, as I discussed earlier, is going to be 38. And the reason why that happened is because we have increased the current cost for fast Ethernet 02 and fast Ethernet 03. We have increased it from the default value of 19 to 50, which made it look like it's a lot worse to use these links, basically. Okay, so with that being done, let's move into access switch one. So I'm gonna go back to access switch one. And right now, if we were to look at the spanning tree, for VLAN 20, we can see that the root port is fast Ethernet 02, as you can see here on the screen. The current cost is 19. And to get to the root bridge, which is DSW2, the current cost is only 19. So let's do the same thing. So I'm going to go to global config and I'm going to say interface range fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 and 3 or 2, 3. And I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN 20. And I want the cost to be 50. Spanning tree VLAN 20. And you can see that port 1 is in the learning state at the moment. 
still in the learning state. And now is in the forwarding state, guys. So fast Ethernet 01 is in the forwarding state. The current cost is 19. And to get to the root bridge, it, the cost is 38, which implies to me that 19 plus 19, that gives you 38. Because all our interconnected links between all the switches is fast Ethernet. And fast Ethernet by default has a cost of 19. And also you can see that the root port is fast Ethernet 01 now. Okay, so with that being done, let's move into configuring rapid per VLAN spanning tree protocol. And we would need to do that across all switches. So I'm going to go to global config and I'm going to say spanning tree mode rapid per VLAN spanning tree or rapid dash PVST. And we're going to hit end and let's just copy that command and paste it across ASW2. I'm going to paste that there and do the same thing on DSW1. And then DSW2. And then let's go back to access switch one and just verify our configuration quickly. So we're going to say show spanning tree summary. And you can see that now has changed from just PVST to rapid PVST mode. And just for the sake of it, let's do the same thing on access switch two. And we get the same thing, the same output. On DSW1, we get the same output. And finally, DSW2. We get the same output. Next, let's move into step 11, where we are going to initiate a continuous ping from PC1 to server 3 or server 1, and then mimic a link failure by flapping fast Ethernet 023 interface on access switch 1. And then we're going to count how many seconds we had to wait until the connectivity has been restored. So what I'll do, I'll go to access switch one and I'll go to global config and I'll go to interface fast ethernet zero slash 23. And I'll just put that in standby. I'll just put that like this and I'll go back to my topology, go back to my PC and here I'm going to just put the windows side by side. Now I'm going to initiate the ping. So I'm going to say ping dash N. I'm going to say 1000. And the IP address, we can use server 2. Sorry, we can use server 1 or server 3. It doesn't really matter. So I will just use server 3 for the sake of it. So it's going to be 192.168.10 dot 201 and I'm going to initiate the ping and on the right hand side I'm already under the interface level configuration mode and from here I can literally just shut down the interface and quickly issue the no shutdown and we can wait so we've lost the first packet and the second packet and then the connectivity has been restored. So we've lost about five to 10 seconds, let's say roughly. So with that being done, let's then configure port fast across all access switches and then reinitiate the test. And just to let you know, this is with rapid per VLAN spanning tree. If you are using a different mode, it might have different results or different connectivity timeout. So I'm going to go back again to global config. And from there, I'm going to say interface range, fast ethernet zero slash 23 and 24. And we are going to enable BBDU guard because if you are going to enable port fast, you must enable BBDU guard as well. So for just your own information, BBDU guard helps to protect the network by disabling a port 
if it receives a BBDU frame, which indicates that another switch is attempting to join the STP um, or the spanning tree domain. This is essential, especially if you are going to use port fast. With regards to port fast feature, enabling port fast on an access port, it can speed up the transition to forwarding state. And this, as I mentioned earlier, this should be combined with BBDU guard for security reasons. So the first command we are tackling is spanning tree. We're going to say spanning tree BBDU guard enable. And then after that, we're going to say spanning tree port fast. As you can see from the screen here, we get a big warning message to that indicates it's very important when you use this feature that you use it sensibly and you only use this feature again is to ports that are only connected to a single host. So that has been done on access switch one. So I'm going to end this and I'm just going to save my configuration. And then I'm going to do the same thing on access switch two. And I'm going to go to say interface range fast ethernet zero slash 23 dash 24. And I'm going to say spanning tree BBDU guard enable spanning tree port fast. End this and then do the same thing on DSW1. Go to global config and I'm going to say interface range fast ethernet 0 slash 23 dash 24. I'm going to say spanning tree. BBDU guard enable spanning tree port fast. And then finally on DSW switch two, spanning tree BBDU guard Sorry, I was supposed to actually say interface range fast ethernet 0 slash 23 dash 24. And then spanning tree BBDU guard enable spanning tree port fast. Okay, so I'm going to go back to access switch one. I will issue a command for in flight checks. So I'll say show run pipe section, and I want to include this interface, fast ethernet 023. So you can see from the output on the interface fast ethernet 023 that we have configured spanning tree features, port fast and PBDU guard enable. Now let's move into step 13, where we're going to repeat step 11. So I'm going to go back to global config and I'm going to say interface fast ethernet zero slash 23. And this time, I'm just going to close this. I'm going to put it on the right hand side and here I'm going to say the same thing. So I'm going to initiate a ping. And from here, I will shut the interface. I will also unshut it. You can see we've lost one packet only. So it was much more faster than the without enabling that feature. So I'm going to cancel that. And I will exit here. Okay, so Okay, so next let's move into step number 14, where we are going to issue the root guard command to protect the root bridge on DSW1 for VLAN 10 and DSW2 for VLAN 20. So root guard command is used to enforce the network topology by preventing a designated port from becoming a root port or a potential root bridge. And this way we are protecting our root bridge by ensuring that the current root bridge remains the root 
and prevents any switch connected to the port from claiming the root bridge role. And the way how it works is that when a root guard is enabled on an interface or on a port, the port is put into a root inconsistent or blocked state if it received a superior PBDUs. The port automatically recovers when it stops receiving superior PBDUs. So I will go back to my topology and I will explain what I mean. So we have DSW1 is the root bridge for VLAN 10. We have DSW2 is the root bridge for VLAN 20. And right now we can see that fast Ethernet 01 and fast Ethernet 02 are connected to access switch 1 and access switch 2 and similarly with DSW2 are connected to access switch 1 and access switch 2 via fast ethernet 0 2 and fast ethernet 0 1 so we would need to implement the root guard command on these two interfaces so i'll go back to DSW1 and we're going to start with DSW1 so i'm going to go to configure terminal and from here i'm going to say interface range fast ethernet 0 slash 1 dash 2 and just to do some in-flight checks I will say do show spanning tree VLAN 10 and right now you can see that fast ethernet 1 which is connected to ASW1 or access switch 1 and also fast ethernet 0 2 which is connected to access switch 2 both of these ports are designated so we're gonna say spanning tree guard root and let's just do in-flight checks quickly so I'm gonna say show running pipe section 0 slash 1 and we're gonna add the dollar sign and you can see that we have included or we have configured the guard port for this interface and let's do the same thing for fast ethernet 02 and you can see that we have configured that interface accordingly now let's do the same thing on dsw2 so i'll go to config terminal and i'm going to say interface range fast ethernet 0 slash 1 dash 2 and from here i would say spanning tree guard root and I will end this. And right now, if you get this message, you don't need to worry about it. This is mainly for VLAN 1. And that's because probably access switch 1 is the root for VLAN 1. And if you don't want to see this message, you can basically remove VLAN 1 from being allowed across the trunks between the switches. And you're not going to see that message. So with that being done, let's do some in-flight checks so i'm going to say show run pipe section zero slash one and you can see that this command has been taken and the same applies for fast ethernet zero two next let's initiate some ping connectivity and make sure that pc1 is able to ping pc3 and pc3 is able to ping server one PC1 is able to ping server 3 and let's do that so I'll go back to PC1 and from here I'll say ping 192.168.10.101 we can ping PC3 successfully with no issues let's try to ping server 1 we can ping server 1 and let's ping server 3 and we can ping server 3 as well. Let's do the same thing for PC2. We can ping PC4. And if we say ping 192.168.20.200, which is server 2, we are able to ping it and then server 4 we are also able to ping it so at this stage we can then go ahead and save our configurations across all our devices and then do the same thing on access switch 2 so i'm going to say write or copy running 
startup and and finally DSW2 and we have reached the end of the lab. That's it folks for this video. If you have found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. If you have any questions, comment, feel free to drop a comment below. I read all your comments and I'm here to assist you. Please remember, consistency and hands-on practice are key to success. So stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, Peace.